Hey, what's up everyone? So I thought I'll do a bit of a competition recap from my last comp that happened in July. Um, so this was the competition where I managed to total a 755 kilo and I weighed in at a 73.8 um, kilo body weight. So these lifts I got, I managed to get a 275 squat for my third, uh, 185 kilo bench and a 300 kilo deadlift in conventional. In this video I just want to talk about how I managed to cut weight the the week before the comp, so how I managed to actually weigh in under 74 kilo. What I did to rehydrate after weigh in, so like my protocol that I would go through so that I didn't get any bloating and everything. Uh, what my training was like the week beforehand, and I did my last heavy singles for squat, bench and deadlift before comp. Uh, my warm up protocol before each lift on the day itself. Uh, attempt selection, so last warm up to first attempt, opener, second attempt, and then third and final attempt. Also just to finish up on some mindset as well, so how I managed to get through the day uh, and keeping on track and not letting my emotions get the best of me. So let's start with the weight cut. So the week before this one, I was actually 78 kilo. So like this is kind of like, probably a little bit heavier than what I normally am uh, before a competition. So normally before a comp, I'm around about 77, um, like maybe like just over 77 at my heaviest. So I was competing on the Friday and I was 78 kilo on the, on the Friday beforehand. And like, we weren't too worried about this one because I don't know if you remember a couple of months back, there was a competition called the NZ Invitational in Auckland that was an invite comp. I got invited to, uh, to compete in just before this lockdown. So before this one, I was actually 79 kilo. And even though we did a mock meet the, the day before the competition was actually supposed to go ahead, uh, I still weighed in 75 kilo, which was after a six day weight cut, 79 kilo. So we weren't really too worried this time around being 78, um, but we followed a, a similar protocol to last time because you know last time I, I got the same total actually, but this was a gym total and, and uh, just before lockdown everything happened so this was all unofficial so we followed a, a similar protocol this time which was you know started with some water loading so I was having just over uh, six just over six liters of water throughout the day <laughs> my macros they pretty similar um, fiber and sodium and everything was was pretty much the same as well the second day of the weight cuts or the second day of the um, the, the weight cut, I had around about eight liters of water, so this is a little bit of an up from the day before. My macros were pretty similar, um, fiber was similar, sodium was similar, and uh, carbohydrates were similar as well. Third day, I had the same amount of water, so around about eight liters of water, and my fiber was pretty similar, sodium was similar, but this is where I started to, to take carbs out because my weight was still like not not high. Like my weight was not too bad, but it wasn't like also low. So this is where we started to cut carbohydrates out, which is about three, three or four days out. And then the fourth day was, this is where we started to cut fiber out. Um, sodium were keeping pretty similar again, but carbohydrates were basically like completely out because my weight was still pretty high at this point. My last training session was already done and dusted. So like I wasn't too worried about like cutting carbs out and you know replacing this with uh, peanut butter this time. Then the sixth day of the weight cut, this is when, this was the day before comp, so it's sort of been Thursday. So again, there was no training on this day here, so I didn't mind too much about uh, like carbohydrates or like sodium or just feeling like crap, you know. So this is where I had, the only thing that I had to eat throughout the day was peanut butter, you know, without sodium. So this was saltless peanut butter and water I was just sipping when I was thirsty just so that I could keep myself um, you know not feeling too dry so that I could keep on going to the bathroom and I was just having um, peanut butter like every couple of hours just a little teaspoon just to uh, like keep myself alive because I was feeling pretty bad at this point this was also no sodium no fiber and no nothing else uh, no training no nothing so I was just chilling at home waiting for for the next day so the next day as well, this is when weigh-in was, and I had an afternoon weigh-in, which was uh, two o'clock. So this was in my favor this time because in the morning I was 75 kilo on the Friday morning, broken up around about eight o'clock. Uh, so this was still a kilo, or I think it was just over 75 
Um, anyway, I was so, I was so over and wet. <laughs> so this was no water at all, so no nothing. And I did wake up and have a hot shower. Uh, not for too long though. Kedrick told me not to worry too much about like getting heat to, to cut waste, so like sauna and hot baths and, and hot showers and all that kind of stuff. I don't know the, the exact science behind it, but I, I have a fair idea that uh, I think like proteins start to break down at a certain heat. So with dehydration, um, the body's not naturally cooling itself and on top of being heated up from something external like sauna or hot bath or shower or anything. They will start to like break down our muscle mass and, and have less force production later on. But like I said, I don't know too much about it. That's just my like rough idea about what actually happens, why to avoid heat during a weight cut. But um, anyway, we start we managed to get uh, just over 74 kilo and this is when I just started spitting into a cup. So this was like my last like resort was just to keep chewing gum and then keep spitting into a into a cup until I uh, got, got down. So I got my brother to drop me off at the venue. Uh, the wet, the scales opened at 12 o'clock. So this was two, two hours before the weigh-in. And I weighed in and I was just under 74 kilos. So this is when, and this was just after 12 o'clock. So I could start to sip uh, a little bit just to kind of hop around so like as close as I can to 74 kilo. So I decided to sip on my my Powerade, which this time I got the Powerade facial powder that you put into the um, into the bottle. So you know, I can't remember exactly, but Kedrick recommended this one here because I think it got it gets um, absorbed a little bit more faster than, than regular Powerade due to the you know, something to do with the carbohydrate content and the carbohydrate to sodium concentration or something random like this. But if you want to know more, just ask Kedrick. He's the the master behind all this stuff. Started to to sip to slowly start to hydrate again since we still had a couple of hours I still wasn't feeling the best but I, I could get some fluids in me until pain itself so I tried to weigh in as frequently as I could which was about like once every half an hour uh, whenever the scales got free until two o'clock and this is when they started weighing in the other people so this is just when I cut everything out and I just waited until it was my turn before like going into the weigh-in room I always make sure that I've got my Powerade bottle with the the Powerade powder already mixed in and ready to ready to drink, so what I do is I go into weigh in, and as soon as I've weighed in, that's when I start to to scull my water bottle. I, I just get dressed, or I, I get dressed appropriately so I can just walk out. Um, so I don't, I don't put my shoes on or anything. I just weigh in, get all my stuff, and then straight into to drinking everything. And then I'll get my my shoes and my socks and and everything else organized just outside of the weigh-in room uh, when I'm out of everybody's way. This speeds up the process a lot more quicker than trying to organize everything and then trying to rehydrate and all this kind of stuff like 10 minutes after your weight in especially when the time's like real crucial because we've only got two hours to to from weigh in until you know we're basically on the platform and we're at least warming up within within two hours. So that's the first thing that I, I would do after weigh-in is I scull back my whole bottle, which is 750 mils, uh, mixed with some Powerade solution. So I have a whole one of these straight away. I mean, I'll have some water after this one here, so I'll have another 750 mils of water, and I'll scull that one back as well. So that's almost 1.5 liters of fluid that I'll have straight after weigh-in. That's the absolute first thing that I do because it's almost impossible for the body to start digesting uh, nutrients appropriately without stomach, you know, stomach juices. So if we're not we're not hydrated, we've got no fluid that's going to be around the, the digestive system to help us actually use what we eat. So always hydrate first, wait 10 to 15 minutes for it to get around the body. I mean, this is when I start eating uh, around about 10 to 15 minutes. You know, ideally around about 20 minutes depending on you know the time and everything is when I start to have food so the first thing that I had after my um, all my fluids and everything which is about 20 minutes after when was sushi so this time I got sushi soy sauce a lot of soy sauce I just had I think I had like six pieces of sushi with a, a ton of soy sauce on top of it just to get the sodium back into the body and, and also just a real quick source of carbohydrates being white rice and everything so yeah my steps always go fluids first you know with electrolytes and, and plain water as well i mean it's just rapid digesting carbohydrates so um sushi is perfect for this one here gets you know into the bloodstream really fast 
and helps to fill out all the glycogen stores that's been depleted for the last few days of, of going carbless. And then after this one here, I'll just have real energy dense food. So after I've let this kind of digest a little bit, uh, like because in the past, after weighing, I've just stuffed my face with uh, a ton of food uh, just because I've been starving for a few days. And this has actually affected me on the platform uh, massively because I've been full. But then it's been really hard for me to actually brace properly because my body's still digesting the food. And you know, I, I just can't like get tight enough in here and I end up like just not being as tight with my lifts and failing. You know, it's just not nice. So this time I was a little bit more gradual and only ate what I needed and then just a little bit more to feel satisfied. And so after my sushi, I would have my real energy dense food uh, because we still had over an hour before we were lifting. And I was quite lucky that my openers were one of the heavier ones. So that means that I was gonna be one of the last people to, to do my first attempt. So after my sushi, I had my OSM bars, which are the, these one square meal bars. I quite like them and I would have these like leading up to comb as well because they're real energy dense, but they're, they're just you know very small so they don't take up more, much room in, in the stomach. They, they do take a little while to digest because they're really, um, they've got like quite a bit of fat, um, protein and carbohydrates. So they're, they're supposedly like a balanced meal, um, but I'll have these after my sushi. <coughs> just to, to start to feel a little bit more full and get like a lot of energy into the, the body at once because these things are like they're packed with calories which is pretty cool. So I just let that kind of chill in there while I'll just nibble on some lollies all the way through until we started warming up. And by nibble I just mean like I'll have like one jelly snake or aeroplane or something you know every five ten minutes just to, to feel like I'm getting some more sugar in the system a little bit more faster while sipping on my Powerade. So that's how that process here started to go. I started to feel pretty good, you know, after about a what, about an hour after weighing. This is also when I had some caffeine. So I had a, a coffee at this point. I just had a one shot long black coffee. I didn't really want to have milk because this doesn't really agree with me for lifting. But I had some caffeine at this point, an hour before we were supposed to, um, you know, ideally be on the platform. And then from here, we just waited. We just chilled, let the food digest a little bit. And we, you know, started to get ready um, you know, after gear check and everything, we start to get ready and, and get dressed into our soft suit. The, you know, things start to feel a little bit more realer at this point and just to, to be moving a little bit more to, to get like loose before we started warming up. Two weeks before the gym for training, <clears throat> this is where I did my last heavy singles for all three lifts. So on the Monday, the, the week prior to competing, this is when about 12 days or something before uh, the competition day, this is when we did our last deadlift session or last heavy deadlift single, which was 295 kilo, uh, which I did in the gym. Up here was pretty high, but it wasn't like a max out, max out. This was more on the grip that actually was like holding me back a little bit, but I still plucked it out and it still moved pretty fine. <laughs> bench, last heavy bench would have been would have been 175 kilo, which was definitely a grind. Like my, my chest still started to feel like a little bit funny, more like tight than anything. And I did this one here uh, about two days after my last heavy deadlift. And then the squat, this is the one that we did on, it would have been seven days out from comp, or eight days out from comp, one of those ones anyway. <coughs> and this is where uh, I did the 272.5 and we were supposed to work up to an RP9. And so we you know, chucked it up a little bit uh, by a little bit, I mean like 12 and a half kilos to 285. Um, and this was, this was an RP 5,000. Like this one moved really slow, but I was, you know, I've got a real stubborn personality. Sometimes I, I don't like to stop. Like I'm, I'm definitely a grinder with, with lifting and all this kind of stuff. And I probably shouldn't have grinded this rep out as much as I did, but I did grind this to the depth and, you know, managed to get the 285, which is so just over a week out from comp. This kind of messed me up a little bit the next week because <clears throat> my core was the most sorest that it's been ever. And it's affected my training uh, actually all the way to the comp itself because on the comp day two, I, I did have still doms in my in my core and my abs and my back and everything. Not like in a bad way, like I injured something, but more like I have, it's definitely been worked and that grind definitely took it out of everything. So that was my last heavy session was uh, about seven days out before the comp. And then the comp week itself, this is when this is when we just had two days. So 
this was closer to the last warm ups of the weights that we'll be doing on the day. So I, I always warm up the same, like no matter what, if I'm like working up to a set of five or a set of one or I'm maxing out or something like this, I'll always warm up uh, pretty similar so that nothing is ever unfamiliar. But this was the whole point purposely of the week before, which was to just literally go up to the warm ups and just be ready for everything on the day itself. So we only trained twice on the week of comp, which was Monday and Wednesday, and then we would have Thursday off and Friday morning off and then competing. So both days were just SPD days. So the first day we actually worked up to the last warm up, uh, apart from Tedlis, which was extremely light. And just a couple of other reps just to keep the keep the body moving under sub max load so i don't lose too much of the gains uh, from from doing nothing just because I'm, I'm not like a heavy heavy lifter i'm like a lighter i'm a lighter guy so i have to kind of do stuff to, to keep things um maintained and also just so that i can feel it myself because if i just stop training altogether then I, I wouldn't be confident enough on the day <coughs> so on the worked up to the it was almost like a last warm-up just 222.5 for a single on the squats and then after this one here we um, did some back offs so four sets of three at, at 205 kilo just to get the blood flowing and just to keep my debt consistent um, with a few sets and reps which you know I wasn't like strenuous on my body or anything and it was good to kind of move some some lighter stuff um, my shoulder was feeling a little bit funny so I think I actually did these ones high bar just to take the stress off my shoulders and the external rotation um, and then for bench was the same thing, worked up to a single at 155, which was around about the last warm up that we were going to be doing on the day. I think this is some back offs, four sets of four at 127.5, just to get some blood into the area here because this was not feeling that great. And I think I actually did these ones um, with close grip too. Deadlift was just like a walk in the park, it was just three sets of three at 207.5, just to keep the movement going. So I never really had to train like deadlifts heavy in the last week before comp because it just takes it out on me mentally if I do, and if I just keep the movement going, then I'm, uh, it's usually there on the day. And then on the Wednesday, it was just, just basically the move. So this was um, the squats, where we had squats, bench, and deadlift again. Our uh, squats, three sets of three, um, 182.5. Bench press was three sets of four, 117.5. And deadlifts was three sets of one at 180 kilo. So this was just strictly to keep moving. Um, these all felt real good, brought my confidence up quite a bit. This was two days out from comp and I was quite deep in the weight cut at this point. Uh, I was still having some carbs at this point I think, uh, but I wasn't having much. And I was feeling like pretty run down and tired and you know, I, this was my last day of work as well I'm pretty sure. Before the comp I usually have a couple of days off work before I compete. Like I said before, this, this week was just strictly to get used to the, the warm ups that we'll be doing. That will be the last warm up before our opening attempts. And also just to keep the body moving and and kind of bring the confidence up while you know dieting and, and water cutting and all this not so fun stuff uh the week before so my warm-ups like i was kind of talking about before is always the same so what i do is i'll you know i'll loosen up a little bit i'll do a couple of stretches to to feel like i'm you know, not going to get injured this is more just a confidence thing for me uh just to feel looser in areas that have felt like niggles before like my hips um, you know, squats and that, like my ankles, my knees, like I like to, to feel like I'm not going to get injured. It helps my confidence go up quite a bit. So I'll loosen up for a good 10 minutes or so. And then my warm up with the, the bar, always it's always the exact same, like no matter what. So it's always 10 reps with the bar. For, if we're talking about squats, it'll be 10 reps with the bar. And then I'll chuck 70 kilo on, I'll do five reps. By this point, I'm actually warm enough to, to lift. So everything else on top of this is just to gradually introduce my body to the weight. So I'll go 70 kilo for five reps, then I'll chuck another 25 on, go 125 for three reps, and then I'll go 170 for two reps, and then I'll go 220 for one rep. And then after this point here, this is when I just go up in single reps, uh, depending on how it moves, so if I move fast, I'll chuck 10 or 20 kilos on, maybe 25, depending on um, what we're going to be opening with so since we're opening with 250 uh, I went to 20 and then 235 and then that was our last one I've done and then it was uh, opening attempt 250 whereas with bench press I will go the barbell uh, 10 reps then I'll go 70 5 reps 
and I'll go 120, two reps, 140, one rep. I mean, after then, I'll just go in depending on um, if I move fast, I'll, I'll put more weight on. If it moves slow, I'll put less weight on um, and just try to get as close as I can to my last warm up that we had planned or uh, within reach of the opener, opening attempt. So it's not going to feel too like unfamiliar because if I went from like 120 to my opening attempt of like 160, then I think it was 165, uh, then it would be it would be a massive shock on my body and I probably would lose a lot of confidence as soon as I unracked it off the off the, the, the bench the bench press rack. So I like to warm up pretty close to what it's actually gonna be, but without actually doing it. Because same thing with like I don't see the point of me doing my opener in the warm up room before doing my opener again in the on the platform itself. You know, so I wanna get close without doing it if that kinda makes sense. Alright, so squats went really good. So these are the ones that I think like everyone gets a little bit freaked out with squats um you know mostly because it's the first lift of the day there's a little bit more uh judging towards these with like depth um being the biggest one that i think most people have a little bit of anxiety about so squats as soon as the first one's over like it's it's always good so the first one's the one that i'm like you know like um probably not gonna hit depth and all this kind of stuff so i'm kind of like used to this now like i just know that it's like it is what it is if i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it and if not if not then like i, I don't so i just try not to i try not to worry about it too much now now i knew that i've done 250 before like multiple times like either more i've done 272.5 like pretty much every week three weeks before comp so i was pretty confident with the weight it was just more about the rules that you know i just had to, to make sure that i was focusing on more than anything so i try not not, not to worry too much about the strength itself just hit it that's all i was thinking about Wait for the cools, hit dev, nothing else. So we chucked 250 on for the warm up, it was my time to go out. Uh, I had no ammonia for the warm up, uh, for the opener, sorry. And I did exactly what a coach said and what I went through with myself in my head, which was just to wait for the cools, hit dev, stay tight, wait for the cools, and then that, that's it, nothing else. <clears throat> so first quad went really good. Then we went for the planned second attempt, which was to uh, six five, because we're ideally we just wanted to get over over the New Zealand record, which was two seventy point five. I'm pretty sure at the time, so we would have been happy with uh, two seventy two point five for the third, uh, but two seventy five was like a mental goal of mine, just because it was five reds in the clip. So we chucked two six five on there, just so they were like within reach of it. So it was a 15 kilo jump, so then our last attempt jump, we only had to do 10 kilo. And it wasn't too much of a, like a bigger move to, or wasn't too much of like a, a shock, you know, for me. Because it was a 15 kilo and then only a 10 kilo for the last one, which was you know, pretty good mentally for me. Last squat flew, second squat flew. Uh, I think my last squat was faster than my second squat, which is pretty cool. I did hit, this was, uh... Well, technically, this was this was definitely like an all-time PB, um, but I had hit a two eighty kilo squat, which was pretty smooth. It was in the gym. It was pretty smooth. Uh, a couple of months before this, so you know, I'm not too surprised that it moved pretty good because I'm pretty confident with you know anywhere around about the two seventy kind of mark. You know, especially in a peak condition with caffeine and audience. So that's one thing. But I'd actually done like this whole prep plane in the gym. With basically no audience this whole time so no hype it was almost just me at, at some point so it was just me and squat rack and, and the gym music itself so no music no ammonia no nothing all the way until that the week before the week before comp this definitely went in my favor because on the day when there was hype and everything this helped me quite a bit to, to not think about the weight itself or anything that just helped me focus more on just executing but yeah those squats and then bench, like my chest was not, you know, it wasn't feeling the best, but it wasn't feeling the worst either. So we're warming up and you know, I, was, I wasn't I was honestly too worried about bench. Did the warm up all the way until I think one, uh, 155 was our last warm up. And then we had a planned opening attempt at 165. You know, and this moved actually pretty good. Like I did feel it a little bit. It moved better than what I thought with the calls because the calls were quite long this time well I thought they were pretty long this time uh, which is definitely good but it was, it was definitely hard on on the competing side of things so then because the first attempt actually felt pretty good chuck 10 kilos on which we did I'm pretty sure 
went up to 175 um, for the second attempt and this one will actually felt better than the first attempt I mean I was like pretty keen just to chuck oh no it was 170 for the second attempt <clears throat> I mean the third attempt 180 that was my best PB that I've had in 83s so I was like, I was really keen just to chuck this on and match my 83 PB on my 74 body weight. And this moved, I think, almost better than the second attempt. So this was really cool. And I felt no pain on uh, my chest. And I didn't even feel pain the day after, which was really cool. So I didn't do any more damage. And I got the 180 kilo bench, which was pretty cool. <clears throat> and then the final lift, which was the deadlift. This is where I've actually messed up a lot in the past before because I've had a lot of food. Uh, while benching and then by the time I get the deadlifts uh, especially being a conventional is that I find it really hard to brace when I've had especially too much lollies so this time I did something a, a very different and it was almost a little bit scary because I was, I was thinking that I wouldn't have enough fuel for by the time deadlifts came but what I did was I stopped eating as much uh, when I got to bench and I'll just snack on my, um, on my lollies really gradually so I only have like one one per attempt I think I was having I mean I had another one during the the break with the 20 minute break in between bench press and deadlift and also the pre-workout I didn't have it as much that I normally would this time so I only had uh, a little tiny half scoop top up I think just at the end of bench so that by the time I got to deadlifts it, it wasn't actually too bad and I could brace um, really good this time this was a risk because I actually haven't tried this before but it definitely paid off and I'm going to be trying this well I'm definitely going to be doing this in, in the very future comp coming up so first attempt uh, flu this I wasn't too worried about deadlifts I, I actually didn't have 300 in my mind this day uh, I just had the Auckland record in my mind which was 288 kilo I think at the time so we went 275 for the first attempt this one felt real good it definitely felt heavy but it felt really good so then we were like, might as well just chuck on the Auckland record, which was, uh, I think we had to get to 88.5 or to 89 or something, something random like this for our second attempt anyway. Um, chucked it on and it flew as well. And this is when I just felt like, I felt real good. Uh, already, I think I already had 10 times body weight, which was the goal, 740 kilos. So anything more would have just been like a bonus. So I thought I might as well chuck 300 on there for a YOLO. Went out there, the, the crowd was just awesome. Like the, the hype, everything just felt perfect. And this 300 moved probably better than the first two attempts. And I, I really definitely put this down to the environment at the time. Like New Zealand Palestine did like a really good job of, you know, getting this, the venue again, um, getting enough of the crowd at this time, especially on the Friday, which was pretty cool. I had a really cool support crew there this time. Like my, um, my girlfriend, um, my brother, but, uh, my flatmates, and a couple of other, other friends, they came as well this time, which is pretty cool. I've actually had this before at a competition. Normally it's like just me, or just like me and my brother at the last comp before that. Um, so it was really cool to have some support crew there in person, which definitely helps. Like, <clears throat> yeah, 100% helps. It's a lot more than what, you know, like, the feeling that you'll get with people that support you online just by watching you live like people actually coming there and supporting you um makes you try like a lot more harder to to get through um and like to not fail any attempts and and, and get everything like nice and legit when when they're the, they're watching that was, that was pretty much the day itself we managed a total of 755 kilo um this was nine for nine didn't miss any lifts and also didn't rp10 anything so there was definitely some uh, kilos left on the platform which is pretty cool this is really motivating like leading up to towards like nationals which is you know only less than a couple of months away which is going to be in Christchurch in New Zealand and this is where like I'm I'm pretty keen to just go all out you know get some RP teams not leave anything left on the platform all cool, these things that I've learned from this comp here which was um, you know like the the refueling after the weigh-in to, to be a little bit more cautious and gradual with it and only eat what I needed to, to feel full again only drink what I needed to, to get hydrated again and also to stay gradually fueled throughout the day and not eat everything uh, to the point where I can't brace as good because that definitely paid off a lot this time with my cramping in there this time like I did start to cramp up after 
uh, my second attempt bench press from Archie. So I noticed this when I went to the bathroom on the break and I was like just moving my, my singlet off and I was like cramping in my shoulders. Um, my hands started to cramp a lot as well, which I was kind of getting a little bit freaked out about, um, you know, especially going in towards deadlifts. So we just waste horse this time. Um, you know, I, I don't know the science or anything behind taking this here, but I know that it, it at least gives me placebo enough to get through the day. So I would start to, to chug a little bit on the soy sauce. Um, Cause I know I was like quite depleted from, you know, especially from the weight car, having all the water and then, you know, cutting sodium out and everything. Like my electrolyte balance was, would have definitely been out of whack. So having the soy sauce, which was basically a straight salt, definitely helped me at least, um, you know, give me a placebo enough to get through the day. So I'll have this one here and I'll just keep on moving and I was foam rolling in between my sets just to put some pressure on the muscle and get some blood flowing around my body. Um, I was trying to walk as much as I could and just not let my body seize up. So I was sitting down as much as I could, but I was also walking as much as I could as well, just so that I, I wouldn't seize up. And same thing with my hands, I actually had a, a big cramp in my hands like in at Auckland the year before in 2019. And this is where it crammed up so bad that it actually cut, split my hand open uh, during my third attempt deadlift. I was lucky that, you know, I did actually get all the way through this deadlift because this one just wanted to like kind of come come apart. Like it was just it was just spasming out and everything. So I didn't want that to happen this time during my deadlifts. So soy sauce definitely helped. Moving around definitely helped a lot, and also sitting down and resting where I could helped um, a lot too. Yeah, my mind's here during this day was pretty cool, like, I've been reading this book, Perform Under Pressure, which has helped a lot with um, knowing exactly where my mindset is, so at the, at the point of this video here, I've just got to the point, like, it's it's still pretty new, um, the beginning of the book, but what they kind of talk about is uh, to the two sides of the brain. So there, we've got the, the blue part of the brain, which is like the more logical, thinking, uh, rational side of the brain. Um, you know, it, it moves a lot slower because you actually have to think about everything before you do. And then we've got our red side of our brain, which is more about like emotional, fight, flight, survival, kind of, you know, real fast part of our brain that can just think just like that. <coughs> so a big key of the day was trying to find like the balance between the two because, you know, I wanted to be clear enough to, to think, but I also wanted to have enough, you know, of my red part of my brain or my fight, flight to be able to grind past the reps because you know if I got halfway through a grind on a set and had to stop and think about like how does this make me feel and, and all this kind of stuff like I wouldn't get I'll get halfway and then I'll, I'll be thinking a lot and then like my muscles will run out of power and I'll be back down so I have to have enough of my blue part of my brain to be able to think about everything so the cues you know like I was saying at the start like hitting depth and being tight, like all these things that I can think about prior to the lift, but then when I actually get to the lift itself, I need to be in this part here, more on the red part of my brain, so I can just execute without any thoughts, and just, you know, unrack the bar, walk back, wait for the command, down, up, and then back forward again, without any thought here, so this book's definitely helped me be aware of the two parts, and knowing when I can use more my blue part and more my red part, so I try to stay more blue outside of the platform and then I try to stay strictly just red on the platform itself so just automatic mode so it's been a real cool learning curve um, from this book here they've got like a lot of other um, mental techniques that I'm, I'm kind of slowly getting through now and I'll, I'll post some stuff on my Instagram for sure when I you know finally finish the book more of the most useful parts out of it and everything but for now this red blue awareness is, has been golden you know um, just knowing when to knowing when to think and knowing when to do has been the, one of the biggest parts were, you know t toward the nine for nine uh, performance on the platform <coughs> so yeah that's uh, pretty much the review of the competition you know we're, we're in lockdown right now in New Zealand or well, in Auckland anyway so there's been more time to, to do videos like this but you know if you guys want to know any more about uh, training or like my nutrition or you know anything that you want to learn about that I've been doing then you know just drop a comment below and I'll uh, try I've got like a lot more time to to do some videos now since you know we're not working or anything until um, this COVID thing finishes up but yeah if you want to know anything else then drop a comment below uh, if you like this video hit like um, if you want to see more then hit subscribe and yeah I'll see you guys next time